just took out of the incubator. It's our first time hatching a duckling from our own ducks. Oh, so cute. Oh, yeah, we gotta get him some food and water. Little cuties. He's a ruined peckin' mix. Or she. We don't know yet. I love the white ones. I need more white. Remember I said once we weeded the asparagus row again, it would flush out and push up new spears? Look at this. There is a bunch of new ones in here. And then these are purple ones that came up. And there's a bunch down in there too. But I still need to finish weeding this row because look, I didn't even do this side. Today we're working in the Ruth Stout Garden and it's come a long way since it had flooded and rotted stuff. So we decided to put out some new stuff in there and work on the bean trellis a little bit because on one side the beans were kind of just falling all over the ground and I put an upside down tomato cage on there and that wasn't working out. And then we have this pea row that we want to clean up and uh, plant some new stuff in. But everything seems to be doing really well in the Ruth Stout Garden now. This is the row where we have the purple hole peas and we just tilled it up and Garrett is mounting it up so I can plant some new stuff in there. And this is the bean trellis. It is doing really well. Um, the Some of the bean plants have almost reached the top. They're probably about six, in six inches shy of reaching the top. So I'm excited to see this really grow in and fill in. So the little duckling has joined my mama hen and her chick somehow. I don't think she's realized that that's not her chick. Or one of her chicks. Goodness. You'll notice in this clip in the background there's actually other chicks roaming around and they're not from her clutch, so they don't stay with her. And we do free range our young chicks with our older chickens. Believe it or not, we've always done that and they do so well when we allow them to free range instead of keeping them under a heat lamp all day. <laughs> What's he doing? Is that lazy? Lazy. Nope. So Derrett, <laughs> Derrett, Garrett just tilled up this row that used to have the peas and he mounded it and I'm going to be planting some more beans and flowers in this row. So these are the beans that I'm planting in this row. These are just bush beans. I've got the big kahuna and the golden wax improved bean and I'm hoping these are the ones that have the black beans inside. Actually, let's just find out right now. Since I'm going to plant them right now anyway. Cross your fingers. They might be the white or the red. We'll see. Uh, they're the white, but they've got... I've actually never had a yellow bean with this color seed before. So, I'm intrigued. Let's see how they do. I also have some soybeans that I want to squeeze into this row. And I think I'm going to put these first on this end in the shady area. Because these will 
really thrive, I think, in part shade. So we'll see. And I'm also going to be planting some zinnias and nasturtiums in this row with them. So I think for the zinnias, I'm going to do all white zinnias. Yeah, I'm going to do the all white ones. They're somewhere in here. So that's the plan. Okay, I actually decided to plant some of this uh, white bush scallop squash um, at the end of this row first because I just think it would be really cool with the white zinnias. So normally in the Ruth Stout Garden we wouldn't till, but this row never had hay over it because we had peas densely planted here. So we tilled it and mounted it and uh, hopefully in the future it'll just be covered with hay and we won't be having to do any tilling in this garden. As usual, I'm planting these fairly close together, about five inches apart, and that's pretty much what I always do for green beans. These are some yard long beans and some red noodle beans, and I had these growing up in an upside down tomato cage because I didn't build another trellis for them, but I'm gonna remove them from the tomato cage and put a little uh, trellis here with just some T-posts and string. Tomorrow we're going to be doing some major weeding in the Ruth Stout Garden because there are some thin areas where grass is coming up. Now it's time for the big kahunas. So down at the end of the row here, I decided to plant some strawberry spinach because I did seed start some of these and they were doing well, but I forgot to plant them and they ended up dying in the seed tray. So I'm going to sprinkle them out right here and hopefully I do not pick these thinking that they're weeds. These are crazy tiny. They're smaller than poppy seeds. Crazy. So I'll just sprinkle them right there and hopefully those come up. Now it's time for white zinnias and I'm going to plant these about one every foot or so all the way down the bean row and I think that'll give them some nice shade during the dead heat of summer. The sunflowers are doing well, getting nice and big. One thing we've noticed about the Ruth Stout method is that a bunch of bugs accumulate under the hay and the chickens love to free range in there. Feeling how heavy these are. We're getting this one's probably about five pounds right now. We'll wait like three more weeks. I think they'll be ready to go. And these are Cornish cross. Mm-hmm. Yep. But they're pretty much free range. And they're still growing fast. So I mean you don't have to sit them in front of a feeder all day. You can give them feed, take it away, and let them go forage. They will forage despite of what some people say online. But they're growing pretty nice. Well, there's one foraging right here. Where did she go? Uh, oh, she's over there in the yeah. corner. All right, we have a bunch of uh, green material from the garden. We pulled a bunch of weeds 
and uh, grass. So I'm gonna do another layer of uh, carbon, which is like hay, dry hay. This is mostly uh, organic material, the nitrogen. So we need to equal it out with some, some carbon. So I'm gonna sprinkle a whole layer of dry hay on it, on the, the carbon, I mean on the uh, nitrogen, and then uh, put some water on it. And in two days, I'm gonna come out here and turn it, and then I'm gonna keep doing that every two days because I have another compost pile over there and it's getting hot and it's almost ready to, to use in the garden. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a bunch of this dry hay to the pile. And a lot of this is already starting to decompose, so it should just add all the bacteria and organisms in there. All right, I'm gonna add water to it and then Two days from now, we're gonna come and turn it again, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Are you videoing me? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a treasure. It's a treasure. I was a tad excited about finding some extra plants that I had seed started behind the compost bin. Go to the barn. They want some feed. I already put some uh, black oil sunflowers in there. Good babies. Good night, my loves. Good night. Uh oh. We moved their tractor and they haven't figured out where it's at. Get this color combo. Very pretty. Garrett forgot to turn the drip off, so I gotta run out here and turn it off so that we don't overwater our plants. Luckily, it was just in the market garden. Good night, plants. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow.